with Christ, with Jesus. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, it says, And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. Now, here is where we say this, what we say, here is where the robber meets the road. Here is where we're going to see whether that knowledge is only knowledge in the head or is knowledge in the heart. Whether that knowledge they had could be kind of uh, hidden or buried by the action of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They called them and commanded them not to speak at all, no teach in the name of Jesus. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, but Peter and John and Saddam said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, but we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That's right. They had seen something. They had heard something. They had heard the teaching of Christ. They had seen the resurrection of Christ. And that had worked mightily in their heart. And because of that now, they were able to stand. You will stand. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now, thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. Nothing jolted the early believers. They had the knowledge of Christ. Because they had the knowledge of Christ, it says, thanks be unto God, that always, always, always makes us, causes us to triumph in Christ and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge. The savor of his knowledge by us in every place, anywhere we find ourselves, whatever wind may be blowing there, whatever confusion may be there, we have exchanged our timidity for his strength. We have exchanged our ignorance for his inspiration. We have exchanged our past for his uh, propitiation. And because he's done that for us, now he causes us always to triumph in James chapter 3. We're looking at verse 13. James chapter 3 verse 13. Who is wise? Who is a wise man and endured with knowledge among you? Who is wise among you? You've been to Calvary. You've been to the cross. You've been to Christ. You've knelt there. You surrendered there. You submitted yourself there. You cried unto the Lord there. Oh Lord, the way my life has been, I've not been demonstrated that experiential knowledge. I don't want to live again in this world with that kind of timidity of the past. I want that knowledge. Who oh, is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, manner of life, his works with meekness of wisdom. We're coming to number three. Number three here is the powerful endowment through the knowledge and the lordship of the king. It says in Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 49, it says, Behold, I, your master, I, your teacher, I, your shepherd, I, your Savior, I, your sanctifier, I sent the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from on high. And I have to ask myself, have I tarried as he said I should tarry? Have I prayed as, I, as he said I should pray? We have the knowledge, no doubt. If I were to ask any of us here, 
do you know anything called the baptism in the Holy Ghost? Say, yes, I know. What do you find that? It's in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. It's in Luke chapter 3, verse 16. It's in Luke uh, chapter 24 and verse uh, 49. It's in John chapter 7. It's in verse 37, 38, 39. You can tell me what the verses are now. That's not experiential knowledge. That's ability to read and then to remember what you read as the experience, experiential knowledge of the power the baptism in the Holy Ghost has that power been given to you. Have you tarried? Have you waited? Have you prayed? Have you consecrated? Have you said, I know the importance of this power, the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and I will pray, I will tarry, I have the conviction, this is what I need to be successful in my Christian life to overcome every temptation and to be able to detect that that's what the devil is trying to do. He's trying to make a trap for me and I want to have the Holy Ghost that will show me that's a trap and to be able to overcome every time. Have you had that conviction that drove you to your knees and to say, I am saved, I'm sanctified, I must be baptized in the Holy Ghost. That the knowledge we're talking about is the knowledge that turns to experience in our lives. Otherwise, it will be hedge knowledge and we will not have the power that we ought to have. It says over here, behold, I send the, the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 40. And I'm reading from verse 29. It says, he gave it power. He's still giving the power today. He gave in the past. He's still giving a present. And he continues to give for the people that have the knowledge, that have the conviction, that have the passion, that have the desire. I'm not going to remain as I was in the past years. I'm going to have the experiential understanding and partaking of the power of the Lord. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no understanding he increases strength. Then in verse 30 it says even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young men shall utterly fall. Verse 31 but they that wait upon the Lord they that wait upon the Lord that is the knowledge of the word of God from generation to generation the Lord had revealed to Isaiah many years before Christ came and when Christ came he still said you have not got this because you have not waited upon the Lord it says but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary. Ah, look at that. That's why we run a little, and then the wind is blowing contrary against our face. We're tired. We're weary. We face, you know, challenges in life, and then our running will slow down. And we face opposition, persecution, and then in our running, it's like, well, I'm trying to run, but look at this, but look at this. It's because we have not waited upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and they shall not faint in Jesus name in your life we're coming to point number two now point number two is the essential wisdom that maintains us stronger than worldly warriors look at that verse 17 again of Daniel chapter 1 Daniel chapter 1 verse 17 as for these four children Daniel Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. As for these four children, hold on. All the other children too, they were not the only four that were chosen uh, that came from Judah. And all the Chaldeans too, all the Babylonians too that were chosen to be in that cause that they trained them uh, for three years. How is it that these four children uh, 
they made distinction in everything they have taught them and they had enough time, extra time. They managed their time that they also had spiritual knowledge that God gave them and they had time to set apart to pray apart from the curriculum of the Chaldeans of the Babylonians and it says as for these four children you know what we don't manage our time very well and the things we learn we don't go over them the Bible study we come to we don't get the outline it's online you can get it there and then uh, come back and study it again ourselves study it to the point that we can teach other people we have the knowledge it's implanted in us it's put into us we meditate on the knowledge and then if we want now to reproduce it we can reproduce that we hear a lot we learn a lot but as for these four children they took the time they created the time they listened over again they meditated on what they learned and they had time apart to pray time apart to search the scriptures by themselves and time apart to be able to lean upon the power of the Lord. As for these four children, God gave them. Now, if you don't have time for God, he'll not have time for you. It's a relationship. If you have time for me, I have time for you. If you have time with her, your wife, she too will have time for you. But if you have hobbies and things you are looking at and this and that, and you don't have time for anyone, and nobody too will have time for you. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill in all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. We're looking at three things here. Number one is the fuller wisdom of the scriptures for believers. The fuller wisdom. The wisdom they taught them in the school of Babylon, that's not full. That's not enough. It will not take anybody to heaven. But the fuller wisdom of the scriptures for believers. Number two is the flawless wisdom of the Savior, the better one, the flawless and the faultless and the fine wisdom that the Savior had, and he is the better one, better than angels, better, better than high priests, and better than the kings of the world, and he happens to be our king. Number three, the faulty wisdom in the society of the base. All those magicians, those are base people, those who are like kind of, you know, licentious and, and sinful people, they didn't have the exalting power and the exalting character of a real believer. And there are people that go by only that wisdom, the faulty wisdom in the society of the base. Let's look at number one. Number one is the, is the uh, fuller wisdom of the scriptures for believers. Second Timothy chapter 3, we're looking at verse 15. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise from a child. That was known the holy scriptures. We might send our children to that country, that country, that country. Go and get knowledge. Go and get wisdom. The wisdom they try to get over there, if they don't read the Bible, if they don't continue attending church, if they don't continue in the fellowship of the children of God, even the little one they've got here, they lose that. And then over there, they replace the wisdom they had before with the wisdom of the world. And then we've lost those children. But the full of wisdom, it says that you have had, you have known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through 
faith which is in Christ Jesus. Verse 16, in verse 16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Then in verse 17, it says that the man of God, the child of God, may be perfect. That's the only wisdom the wisdom of the scriptures that makes us perfect God told Abraham he said Abraham walk before me and without perfect there's no way we can do that without the knowledge of the divine and the knowledge of God himself it says it's the thing that will make us perfect through the foundation to all good works the lord do that in our lives in jesus name we're looking at psalm 19 and we're looking at verse 7 psalm 19 verse 7 it says the law of the lord is perfect converting the soul the testimony of the lord is sure making wise the simple you know when you say the simple there it means uh, actually simple turn the simple turn the ignorant, the dummy, the one that doesn't know how to live to please God. Simple, simple turn. But it is the watch of the Lord. It is the testimony of the Lord that is sure, making wise the simple. In uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 3. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 3. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Actually, that verse is being written about the king of Ty uh, the king of uh, Ty Tyros also. And but we want to apply it to ourselves. It says, Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. Wiser than Daniel. Wiser than Daniel. Daniel was wise. He was 10 times better in wisdom than all those people in uh, the Chaldean philosophy. But now, after Daniel had lived, he knew Christ was coming. And he said, 70 weeks are determined upon your people. Here is what you will do when the Messiah comes. But he died before the Messiah came. He was born of a virgin. He was Emmanuel, God with us. All his miracles and healings and deliverances, Daniel did not see that, did not know that. And to pray in the name of Jesus, Daniel did not know all that. And to have the heart that is given to us from God by the knowledge of the Lord himself. And to grant us the divine nature. Yes, he was righteous. Yes, he was holy. But Daniel did not know that promise. And then to have the power and the, of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in another language. Daniel did not know all that. And to know the details of the end time. To, he knew about eschatology. I know he knew about eschatology. But to know the details, here is what will happen. Here is resurrection. Here is rapture. And here is the establishment of the kingdom of God and the Antichrist and when Christ will come. He didn't know all those details that we know. What I'm saying is Daniel did not have the whole Bible. We have the whole Bible and we have the teaching spirit of God and we have the teaching uh, you know pastor that teaches us. Daniel did not have all that. Now look at that verse again. Behold thou art wiser than Daniel. You can be wiser than Daniel because of the scriptures, because of the spirit, because of the shepherd we have and because of all the provision that is made for us but we need time. We must give time. and must give ourselves to what is available for us so that the word of God will be fulfilled in our lives. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from me. We're coming to number two here. Number two is the flawless wisdom of the Savior 
the better one. We're looking at Colossians chapter 2, and we're reading from verse, we're reading from verse 3. It says, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. It's talking about Christ, our own Savior, who says whatever we ask him, he will give us. If anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, and he will give him your brain at no, but let him ask in faith. It says in Christ, in our Savior, in our Redeemer, in whom are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And then 